So my suggestion to you is to not wait for time to practice, to not wait to see if your mind will change, to not fall into the trap of doing your practice and then hoping for the best, that somehow your mind will flip over like a pancake. I mean, some people actually ask, you know, will I ever achieve realization in this lifetime? Is that possible? I mean, and the Lama goes, you're asking me? You're the one in charge. <laughs> of course it's possible. Why would the Lamas be here teaching if it weren't possible? These are the Buddha's teachings. But we have to grab the opportunity. It's for us to take that, to use every minute, and to not get neurotic about it by going, oh, 10 minutes just went by and I was mindless again. Pfft, that was only the time you caught. <laughs> <laughs> so every time you catch yourself, you go, right, good, good girl, good boy. Pat yourself on the head. Get back to work, get back to it. And uh, we think that um, in order to gather merit, for instance, we have to do certain specific things, like, you know, in the uh, Nundro book, for instance, we do mandala practice with the rice and the rings and all that stuff. But then we go outside and we go, Wow, look at my car. Isn't that a sexy car? <laughs> or, God, what a gorgeous day. I'm going to have to just jump in the lake. I feel so happy. I'm going to swim, and I'm just going to have lots of fun. And, you know, ordinary. Well, I'll have a picnic. Or I'll go climb a mountain and be free. <laughs> Something like that. We don't even think to ourselves. You know, we sit in our practice, we offer rice, and we visualize it as phenomena. Here's phenomena! <laughs> and we're grasping left and right, you know? We, you can offer everything. When your eyes see something, offer it to the three precious jewels. Offer it to the Lama of three Kayas. Offer it to the guru, past, present, and future. Offer it to the protectors, to the bikinis. Anybody except you. <laughs> <laughs> but you can use any moment of happiness and make it even more beautiful when you offer it. My experience has been that when you have a moment of happiness and you have that twinkle in your eye and you feel like having a good time and you take that moment and grab it to yourself and selfishly just go act, act out somehow. I don't know. Do what? Do what you do. Whatever people do. Climb a mountain. Uh, go have drinks. Go party. You know, whatever, whatever it is that people... I don't know. I never leave my house. So whatever it is that people do... <laughs> And we think, that's going to do it. That's, I have this moment of bliss, and so I'm going to take it, and I'm going to ramp it up. I'm going for it. I'm going to have a great Saturday night. And um, usually what happens is you end up very unhappy. Because you get to the top of the mountain, if that's what you were going to do, and man, it's just another mountain. <laughs> You've seen mountains before. Great view. You've seen great views before. Or you decide you're going to go out partying. So you go out partying. And for a little while, when you're bending the old elbow, you know, there's a little happiness in that, I guess. But then, ugh, then you don't feel so good. And if you, don't, if, if, if you don't feel bad that night, you're going to feel bad the next day. And then you really feel stupid. Don't you? Because you've had this opportunity. There was a wonderful, blissful moment, and you wasted it on garbage. 
You didn't even do anything healthy for yourself. It was just a complete waste. Or then, you know, you think, well, uh, I'm going to, you know, just, I think I'll have a, a what, what, what would you do, like a movie? What, what is it, you can watch one movie after another? Marathon. Huh? Marathon. marathon, that's it. I do, I'll do what I really like. I'll have a movie marathon. And at the end of that, your mind is like, <laughs> you don't even know what you are anymore. <laughs> you're like, you've seen all these things that have ended in two hours. You're like, ah, I'm lost. I don't know what's happening. And really, you, what happens in a situation like that is we are out to lunch. We are really training our minds to be out to lunch. So I'm not saying that you should never party again, depending on your vows. <laughs> I'm not saying that you should never have a good time again or climb any mountains or think your car is sexy. I'm not saying that you should become some sort of freakish person that doesn't fit in this world. But I am saying train your mind the way Rinpoche has done. Lifetime after lifetime. And look at the sweetness and nectar the prize of that effort is so beautiful and beyond compare. So I guess that's my message for today, uh, short and sweet. Um, I hope that you will take every opportunity and really practice Dharma more deeply, not just when you're sitting down, but constantly training the mind constantly using your opportunities. And uh, that's pretty much all I want to say today.